was a lot younger, like no older than seven. I saw an ad in a magazine for a game. It was a game that claimed you could design and build your own virtual railroad and run trains on it. It sounded amazing to me at the time. I already had another game called Lionel Train Town, and my favorite part of that game was the two mostly empty maps where you could design and build your own layout. This game sounded pretty much exactly like those levels, except fleshed out to a whole game and with the most photorealistic 3D graphics you could hope for around Y2K. I never got to play that game as a kid, but a vague memory of the ad stuck around in my head, and now almost 20 years later, after searching on and off for the last few months, I think I may have finally found the game it was advertising. And in case you couldn't already tell from the title of this video, that game is Trains, spelt with a Z because it was 2001 and apparently that was cool. Now I had actually heard of this game, because this game spawned an entire series that's still going to this day. But it wasn't until very recently that I realized the full scope of these games. I'd always assumed that Trains was a pure train driving simulator, in the same vein as Microsoft Train Simulator, which I did have as a kid and I could never really get into. So I'd pretty much ignored the series up until now. That was a mistake, because a huge chunk of these games involves designing and building your own routes to drive trains on. It's like a virtual model railroad. So, with that bit of context out of the way, I want to go back and take a look at the original Trains from 2001, though the version I have is actually the Ultimate Edition that came out a year later. This also isn't going to be a super in-depth review, as I haven't spent a ton of time with it at this point. I'm also not really that interested in the more realistic simulation aspects of this game, I mainly just want to know whether or not it makes a good virtual model railroad. Now, let's get into the game. Upon starting up the game, you'll be immediately greeted by some loud, super-compressed FMV clips telling you who made it. Then it gets to the main menu, and there are a few options. I decided to go into drive mode first, just to get a feel for how this game works before trying to design my own route. And right off the bat, this game managed to impress me. There's a pretty decent selection of locomotives and rolling stock to choose from, especially compared to something like Microsoft Train Simulator, which came out the same year. They even have the TGV available, which is a train that I've always liked. My only real complaint here is a distinct lack of steam engines. This game also lets you run multiple trains at once and completely customize the consist of each one of them. This is exactly the kind of thing I was hoping for. Driving the trains themselves isn't too bad either. I've disabled most of the more realistic aspects of train driving in the settings, and what's left is essentially a virtual model railroad transformer in the side plane over here. That's fine by me, as it makes it easier to manage multiple trains at once, and it makes the game feel more like a virtual model railroad, which is what I'm after. There's an AI that'll take over and control any trains you aren't actively driving, and it generally does a pretty decent job, although it does adhere to speed limits very strictly. I love the way the camera perspectives are handled in this game. You can focus the camera on any car in any train that you're currently controlling while in chase mode just by clicking on it. And you can do the same for any car in any train on the map with the consist bar down here at the bottom of the screen. The other camera views can also be accessed with the mouse from the control sidebar. This whole system is a far cry from Microsoft Train Simulator, where the camera angles are much more limited and have to be switched between with the number keys. My only real problem with the camera system in trains is that the camera is always moving. I wish there was a way to fix the camera in a single spot and just watch the trains go by. The tracking camera kind of does this, but it always pans along with the currently selected car and then immediately hops to a new position whenever it goes out of view. I want to be able to watch a whole train go by from a static perspective, or zoom the camera way out and watch multiple trains from a distance like on a real model railroad. Aside from that one gripe though, the drive mode of this game pretty much delivers what I'd expect. Now let's have a look at the surveyor mode, where you can design and build your own railroad, which, as anyone who's ever worked on an actual model railroad can tell you, is by far the best part. Unfortunately, surveyor mode is where this game's cracks begin to show a bit more. I haven't even built anything yet, and I've already ran into a problem. The basic controls for moving around a 3D space are incredibly clunky. Rotating and zooming the camera with the mouse works well enough. You can also pitch the camera up and down with the arrow keys, which is slow but functional. But the only way to pan the camera around is by right-clicking a point on the map that the camera then instantly jumps to along with this compass rose marker thing. This method of panning gets annoying pretty quickly, and when trying to lay down long sections of track it can be especially irritating. Blender, this is not. 
There's also this weird haze that persists over everything in the game, even with the draw distance turned all the way up, which makes panning the camera around even more necessary than it would be otherwise, and just lowers visibility in general. You can zoom the camera in pretty far, which makes it so the haze isn't as much of a problem, but then you have to contend with that compass rose marker I mentioned earlier. This thing is always positioned right at the camera's focal point, so there's not a good way to look at something close up without this thing getting in your way. The best thing about this whole map editor is easily the track laying, which is good because that's arguably the most important part. The controls are fairly intuitive and the game will automatically smooth out curves and add in switches when you start joining together different sections of track. Laying down roads works just as well, as in it works exactly the same way, meaning that sections of road will automatically curve when you bring them together, and I could not for the life of me figure out how to join two roads at a clean 90 degree angle. I tried making a grid of roads to form a downtown type area on this map I was working on, and this is the result. I also couldn't figure out how to make any proper railroad crossings. I expected a crossing to automatically appear when I crossed a road over a section of track, but instead they just layer over each other like this. I don't think it really matters though, because all the roads and cars in this game seem to exist on an ethereal plane, which allows them to pass right through anything that might otherwise get in their way. As far as adding other scenery goes, this is where the annoyances really start to add up. The terrain and texture brushes work well enough, but there's no hotkey to scale the brush size, so I have to keep clicking up here in the sidebar whenever I want to adjust the size even a little. As I'm sure you can imagine, this gets annoying pretty quickly, especially when trying to do fine detail with terrain texturing. Placing buildings and other scenery is similarly irritating, as switching between the position and rotation tools for objects in this game also requires clicking a button over on this side panel. This map is the end result of my efforts. I'm sure I could have made something a fair bit better and more detailed had I spent more time on it, but after a couple hours, all the little annoyances added up to the point where I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. I also haven't mentioned it yet, but this game lacks any sort of UI scaling. This makes it so the side panel where all the controls are is a fair bit smaller than I'd like at the resolution I'm running the game at. Now this problem is by no means unique to trains. A lot of PC games from around this time end up with microscopic interfaces when you scale them up to run on modern high resolution displays. The problem here is that I'm not doing that. I'm running this game on a computer that natively runs Windows XP with an era appropriate display. Granted, the specs on my machine are a fair bit beyond what you would commonly find around the time this game came out, but I haven't modified this game in any way. I've just maxed out all the graphics settings that come built into the game. That means that I'm running this game at the highest resolution the developers reasonably expected anyone to be able to, but they failed to take into account how small the interface gets when you scale the game up to that size. I consider that a design failing. But I digress, because there's still one more part of trains that I need to take a look at. The Ultimate Edition includes a tool, separate from the main game, that lets you create custom skins for a variety of locomotives and cars. This utility is weirdly limited though. To start with, it runs in a windowed mode at a fixed resolution, and there's no way to change this as far as I can tell. It also has these different interfaces to choose from, though I'm not entirely sure why. They're all functionally identical aside from different background images, and some of them move the toolbar to the top of the window. The process of actually creating custom textures is a little bit strange. Each texture is broken up into one of several mosaic patterns that you choose at the start. From there it works like a paint by numbers where each tile can only be filled in with a single solid color. The only freehand tools available in the editor are for placing decals and text, both of which are clunky and require navigating multiple menus. The text I placed doesn't even show up in-game. Regardless, I made this custom locomotive instead of accompanying boxcars in my channel colors. So now let's go try it out on the custom route I made earlier. And because I've made two main lines on this route, I'm running a Santa Fe passenger train on the other one. Unfortunately, my custom train derailed the moment I tried to start it. I'm not entirely sure why, but I think there might be something wrong with the terrain on my map. The train on the other main line fared a little bit better, but it too derailed after making it about halfway around the main loop. I clearly went a little bit overboard with the terraforming tools here. I would go back and try to fix my map up a bit to hopefully make it work better, but this is where I ran into yet another of this game's problems. That being that the map editor has no quick test mode, and that means every time I want to test something after I've tweaked it a little, I have to save my map, quit back to the main menu, go into drive mode, test the level, quit back to the menu again, rinse and repeat for every tiny change I want to make. Frankly, I don't really feel like dealing with that on top of all the other annoyances with the map editor that I already mentioned, so that isn't going to be happening. 
All that being said, I don't hate trains. It's a bit of an ambitious concept trying to combine a realistic train simulator with an in-depth layout editor, and this game manages to pull it off pretty well, especially considering the time it came out. It's not quite the fully fleshed out virtual model railroad I was hoping for, but it's certainly a good start. The fact that this game has spawned so many sequels means I will probably be revisiting the series sometime in the future. They've been making these games for a long time now, so they probably have a pretty solid formula down at this point. The new ones have gotta be good. Right? Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all that jazz. I've got some links up here to some other videos I've done. Go check those out if you're interested. I'll see you later. Bye.